Panyaza Les Sufi is the newly elected deputy chairperson of the ANC in Gauteng. We have Soli on the line from Soweto because if you want to call us as well, it's 011 759 Soli, go ahead. Uh, <coughs> Mr. Les Sufi, I'm very much disappointed about your statement that we've uttered just now about Kedani Mashangu and the. Uh, the um, person who was a chief whip before, they were not supposed to be elected again. That is very, very wrong, really. I'm a member of ANC also. That disappoints us. Thank you very much. Bye. Thank you, Sonny. Well, I accept that, uh, but the reality is that going to conference, their membership was not terminated. They were full members of the African National Congress. And when we were at conference, we gave a report on how we've handled the matter. And at conference, it was quite clear that delegates were not happy in the manner in which this matter was handled. They then instructed us, as the new leadership, to go and speedily attend to this particular matter. So on the process of membership and procedure, uh, it was very, very difficult to say, no, you can't stand, because uh, we have not exhausted that process that will remove their membership. And the constitution of the ANC is quite clear that every member in good standing, has the right to nominate and be nominated. So within that particular contest, we felt that uh, this should be uh, handled in that fashion. But now that conference has instructed us, and now that South Africans have expressed their views, and now that even members of the ANC, like Soli, are saying that this matter was not appropriately handled, we are requesting, politely so and respectfully so, allow us the necessary space for us to go and attend to this matter. When we come to society, because we want to be a party that listens to society, you okay. can't be a political party that does not listen to its members. Okay, well, you can't listen society to society. Spoken out, and when society expresses a view, we will indulge in that particular view and come back and present our solution. Good. To that. Okay, let's talk about corruption as a whole. I mean, if we've got these issues uh, within the ANC and the Gauteng, how how do you deal with corruption on a daily basis? How do you get the message out there that it's not acceptable? Show me any government except this government that, that there's a corruption busting agencies and institutions. No, but I'm asking, I mean, clearly it's a big problem. I'm not, I'm not focusing on, no. on we've, we've dealt with the topic now, um, within your uh, party, party members no. there, but, uh, you know, on a day-to-day -day basis, how is the party going to deal with corruption? I mean, how, how do Conference you get your following it. and your support back? Conference spent time on it, eh? uh, and conference directed us, no cover-ups. Conference directed us, no status. Conference directed us, regardless of any position anywhere. If you are found to be corrupt or engaging in corrupt activities, we must show you the door. Conference directed us that all corruption busting institutions should be strengthened. Capable people, talented people, independent people, people who are ready to act without fear or favor. So we've been directed by conference to deal with corruption because we've identified it as one of the areas where South Africans feel we need to start to bite. And we have to bite mercilessly, but in a manner that will send a strong message that in the leadership of the African National Congress, in government, in the private sector, where we can just get a sense of corruption, we must invade that space mercilessly. Ramonti is on the line from Soweto. Go ahead, Ramonti. Yes. Uh, uh, Dr. Panyas, how are you? I'll be fine one day. How are you? I'm all right. Yeah, uh, I would like to find out what is the plan of the ANC with regards to elections ne next year, 2019, especially if we experience a coalition. That means uh, the ANC not getting more than 50%, getting less than 50%. What are your plans? What, are you, what do you plan to do uh, in a way? Let's take a case study of City of Jobek, what is happening, EFF, ANC, and DA. Similar things. Let's say we have similar result what are you going to suggest or whatsoever thank you we spend hours and hours on this particular topic uh, and topic. our view is very simple strengthen the african national congress rectify the mistakes that we have made listen to the calls of our people ensure that our people feel that the african national congress is responding to their needs if we do that we don't think that there will be a need for us uh, to have a coalition government if you analyze the results of both metros uh, Johannesburg and so on. It's not that people voted for the opposition. 
actually in Johannesburg, uh, the leading party was the African National Congress, is that, that we didn't win enough to form our own government. So it means that we need to rectify those particular mistakes, strengthen the, the organization, select the best to represent us in government. And on that basis, we really believe that our people will, uh, 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 will vote for the African National Congress. So we we'll spend time there, and we really believe from now on, when we unveil all the strategies that we have uh, 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 arrived at that conference, people will be excited that the real African National Congress that listens to our people is back, and we want them to understand that we want to serve them better. Ito, I know you've taken that on. Yeah. You said you'd take it up to a national level. Yeah. When's that going to happen? What's your strategy there? The reality is the electronic tolling system faced serious problems. Compliance measures were not adhered to. If you check the consultation process, people felt that they were not appropriately consulted. And it does not mean that the private-public partnership or user-pay method is wrong. We have toll gates in the country. But the reality is people feel that this system uh, uh, didn't accommodate their views, they didn't contribute to it, and therefore they rejected it. And any tolling system, you can go, I mean, the, you've got e-tolls in London, uh, you've got e-tolls in Stockholm, uh, 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 they work. But when there is no buy-in of society and there's no buy-in of people that need to utilize it, it's tempted to fail. And that's where we are as South Africans. So we felt that you don't have to sugarcoat it. Mm. The reality is that this thing is not working. Any so let's engage, the money and let's engage those that can assist us to reach this particular decision to do so. But as the African National Congress in Gauteng, we have taken a clear, conscious decision that the ethos must be terminated and be terminated immediately. And any chance of getting the money back, or is that a, well, an expensive that, lesson? That, that's the part that uh, administratively the state must deal with it. But politically, uh, we really feel that the ethos must be terminated and not any other day but immediately and we really believe that that's the decision that uh, will communicate it to to those that uh, work with us around this particular issue another big issue obviously in this uh, country is uh, what's happening at schools around the country you were involved in the limpopo textbook scandal you were the education spokesperson i mean what i i, I know i mean that was horrific wasn't it uh, what what was learned from that and what can improve the education here in the country so that everybody can get it, so that everybody can have school books? Well, the good thing is that out of that particular lesson, we published what you call norms and standards. Norms and standards explain the minimum norms, what need to happen in each and every school, the, the issue of textbook, appointment of teachers, infrastructure, and all other related matters. So, so from the lesson that we picked up in Limpopo, uh, uh, the country has benefited because those norms and standards uh, have been introduced. Yes, there's a recent case now in the Eastern Cape that is taking us backward. I'm quite convinced that the national minister is going to deal with it so that there's appropriate infrastructure and that the provision of uh, services such as the textbooks, uh, furniture, appointment of teachers is done in a manner that our country can uh, compete with the best in the world. We've got another caller from Whitbank, an anonymous caller. Go ahead. Hi, good evening. And your guest there. Uh, the question that I'd like to ask and that really is that is it correct to have the Dani Mashango in a senior position of the African National Congress, yes or no? The question is based on what we want to do as South Africans. To give the president a chance because we know he's the right person who can change the country and develop the economy of this particular country. Because this person she led a campaign to murder our own people. And it is heartbreaking, but Africans cannot forget so easily. Thank you. I didn't pick that up, unfortunately. Uh, I also picked I up, pick up. Uh, a few points. I think he was talking about uh, the level of crime in the country and how people are being affected. And, and correct me if I'm wrong, Anonymous. No, crime is one, is one area that we need to attend. Yeah. Uh, there's no way especially in this particular province, uh, uh, that we can leave crime unattended. If there is something that we need to nip it in the bud, it's crime. Uh, and it involves many things. Uh, conference identified various structures. The law enforcement agents we really believe that need to be uh, radically uh, structured. Uh, the registration of either firearms, uh, motor vehicles, and also 
uh, people that are coming into our province, into our country. So there is a proper uh, 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 strategy that we adopted at conference. I think uh, next month uh, in August, we want to release our resolutions. I think people will see from those particular resolutions that we have taken decisive steps to deal with some of this aspect, especially the issue of crime. We really believe that uh, the level of crime in our province that are completely, completely unacceptable. Uh, let's go back to schooling because I, I wasn't yeah. finished there. Uh, the level of racism that we are seeing in schools, and I know it's something that you've yeah. been involved in and, and you've had many conversations with the schools involved. Why has it got to this point, do you think? And how worried are you that children at a young age are already experiencing this sort of racism? If you thought non-racialism with the smooth transition, uh, we're going to be wrong. We're, we're, we're wrong. Uh, and, and we're going to mislead society that uh, uh, non-racialism is just going to be a walk in the park and everyone will embrace non-racism. This country faced uh, the fiercest form of racism. Mm -hmm. uh, and there are some people directly or indirectly benefited out of it. And for them to change is going to take us time. But we must persuade, 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 and persuade. And how do you think, persuade? Uh, What's the uh, key here, do you think? Uh, through discussions, uh, using uh, uh, legal means like the courts and other processes. Uh, we've scored victories. Eh? We've scored many victories. Uh, it's only few people that still believe uh, that the color of the skin is a direct benefit. Uh, and majority of them are hiding behind the broomstick because we can see them. Mm. <laughs> they have nowhere to hide. Uh, they're trying to invade the private education system. We have a relationship with the private education system. They're trying to... Uh, 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 um, defend themselves within the public education system, we are exposing them. Reality is, non-racialism cannot be postponed, that we are better off together. And the day will come where our children will sing, dance, and learn together. And that if there is any person that believes that this belief by our former president Nelson Mandela was wrong, that particular person will be defeated. And this tell me country, about your aspirations. How country, are you going to get to that point? Where do you see yourself, your career trajectory? Unfortunately, I've never taken that decision ever in my life. <laughs> uh, I'm a product of the African National Congress, um, and, and my career uh, has been detected, dictated by the African National Congress. And I doubt <laughs> that the African National Congress can take me where they feel I don't have the capability, the talent, and the skill to be. So where I stand, I'm handing over, literally, <laughs> both my future and my aspiration to this noble movement called the African Because Congress. you didn't accept the nomination into the ANC National Executive Committee at Nazareth. And I knew a, a lot of people were disappointed in that. They thought that that's what you should be doing. Because I don't want to rush. Uh, you feel you've still got a lot to learn? Uh, yeah, I'm still young, uh, <laughs> relatively. Uh, and there's no need for us to rush. But besides, we have made a huge investment in the education space in Gauti. And I felt that if that investment is not appropriately protected, uh, it, it, it really might yield uh, uh, the, 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 the undesired outcomes. And that's the reason why I felt I should be here. But uh, if you look at the National Executive Committee of the ANC, I mean, you've got capable uh, men and women that are representing us there. And I think they enjoy our support, in particular our president. I really feel that our president is doing very well. And what sort of support is needed for the youth in the ANC? Those we have to. Let me tell you, uh, that's the future. If the African National Congress can't develop a mechanism to hand over the baton to young people, ensure that there is a generational mix in terms of leadership within the structures of the African National Congress, invest in the skills development of young people, because we need to be part of the international community. We can't be consumers of products. We have to be manufacturers of those particular products. We can't just absorb everything that is sold by other people to our country. We need also to take out something there. To do that, you need a very strong uh, uh, skills uh, 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 revolution so that our young people can acquire the skills that they need so that they can compete with the best in the world. Well, I certainly know that many people are looking at you, Panyanzi Sufi. Thank you very much. It was good to time. have you with us. Today. Now, the usually silent victims of domestic abuse speak to Nkapila Mabusa. Checkpoint is coming up.